In today's lesson, we're going to be learning about cell transport. An organism must be able to obtain energy and raw materials and get rid of waste. An organism cells performs all of these functions. These functions help keep cells healthy so they can divide. Cell division allows organisms to grow and repair injuries. This exchange of materials between a cell and its environment takes place at the cell's membrane. To understand how materials move in and out of the cell, we need to learn about diffusion. So what is diffusion? Watch what happens when I pour some drops of food coloring into this glass of water. So at first, it's really easy to see where the dye is and where the water is. But as you can see, over time, these two substances begin to blur. Everything, including the water and the dye, is made up of tiny moving particles. These particles travel from where they're really crowded to where they're less crowded. This movement from an area of high concentration, which is the crowded area, to an area of low concentration, which is an area that is less crowded, is called diffusion. The dye particles diffuse from where they are really crowded, right in the center where I drop them in, to where they are less crowded, all throughout the water. Diffusion also happens within and between living cells. Cells do not need to use energy for diffusion. So let's take a look at how molecules like to move. Molecules like to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration in order to reach equilibrium. They like to be equal. Take a look at this picture. If you take a look, this is the phospholipid bilayer, which is also called the cell membrane. It lets certain things into and out of the cell, and it helps to maintain homeostasis. This helps the cell to, stay, to be a stable environment so it can function properly. Today we're going to take a look at the different ways that the cell can transport things into and out of itself. So take a look. This area here, if we take a look at all of these purple solutes, we can call solutes molecules, we can, we can call them solutes, and these are things that are moving across the membrane. This is an area where it's high concentration. They want to move, the molecules want to move to an area of low concentration where there are not a lot of solutes. Let's take a look at this slide here. If we want to take this ball and we want to send it down the slide, it doesn't require any energy. That's easy, right? No energy needed to roll the ball down the hill. How about this picture? This boy is sitting way up high here on the slide and he's going to go down. No energy is needed to go down the slide. He's going from high to low. No energy. This is a way we're going to introduce passive transport. Passive transport is the movement of materials from areas of high to low concentration, like on the slide or the hill. The ball started out high, the boys started out high, and where did they end up? Low, low on the slide, low on the hill. The boy and the ball did not use any energy. So in passive transport, the cell does not use energy. 
we're going to learn about three types of passive transport. Okay, these are the examples of types of passive transport. We have diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and osmosis. Let's talk about diffusion first. So diffusion is a type of passive transport. It moves small solutes. Okay, solutes we can call molecules, it can be salt, it can be water, it can be glucose. And the molecules like to move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. Just like the example of the boy on the slide, he went from high to low without using energy. does not use energy. And let's take a look at a picture. Here we see a bunch of solutes here. And down below here, there's not as many. So where we see many solutes, that's the area of high concentration. So these solutes want to reach equilibrium. So they want to diffuse through the phospholipid bilayer. This is our cell membrane here. So they want to move through the membrane into the cell or out of the cell, depending on when you're, where your concentration is lowest, in order to reach equilibrium. So the molecules are moving from high concentration to low concentration. Let's talk about the next type of diffusion. We have facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is a type of passive transport. Facilitated diffusion, though, it moves large molecules from areas of high to low concentration. So it moves the larger molecules. And because it's moving larger molecules, it has to use special protein channels so that the larger molecules can cross the membrane. It's a passive transport, so no energy is used. So a memory clue to remember facilitated diffusion is that someone who is there to facilitate is there to help. So in this case, these protein channels are helpers. They help the molecules move across the membrane. Let's take a look at a picture of it. Okay, up top there is our memory clue, right? Facilitate is to help. So here we have the area of high concentration. We see that there's more uh, molecules up here. These are large molecules and there's a low concentration here of solute. We looked at protein channels when we learned about the phospholipid bilayer, the cell membrane. <coughs> so here we see the uh, protein channel in action. It sort of opens up and the large molecule is engulfed in and then is released um, to the area of low concentration. So these are carrier protein and let's remember our memory clue, facilitate means to help. So these um, facilitated diffusion needs helper proteins in order to move the large molecules. Our third type of diffusion is osmosis. So when we say osmosis, you need to remember water. Osmosis is a type of pass passive transport, but it only moves water. Okay. It moves water molecules from an area of high concentration to low concentration, 
and it needs to use special protein channels called aquaporins. So osmosis needs aquaporins, these are special protein channels, to move water molecules, only water molecules, across the cell membrane from an area of high concentration to low concentration. This does not use the cell's energy. And a memory clue, um, the O in osmosis, if we think H2O, that H2O is the compound for water, so H2 osmosis. Or I like to think too, right, there's a lot of O's and S, like SOS, when you're sailing on the sea and you need help, SOS water. Okay, um, let's take a look at a picture of how this looks. So these little guys are, they look like tiny little bumblebees, but this is the water molecule. Okay, a water molecule kind of looks like um, Mickey Mouse. They call it the Mickey Mouse um, molecule because it has um, two hydrogen and one oxygen. Each two two hydrogen and one oxygen. So we see the hydrogen molecule there and the two, or the two hydrogen molecules there and the one oxygen there. Okay, and, and these water molecules want to get through the cell membrane, the phospholipid bilayer. And remember, these, the uh, tails actually don't like water, they repel water. So the water molecule actually need these helper proteins, these aquaporins, in order to get through. So again, down here we see a ton, we're looking at these blue and white, that's the water molecule. We have a ton down here, but not so many here. So this is the area of high concentration, and the water wants to diffuse across the membrane, through the membrane, to the area of lower concentration to reach equilibrium. So the water molecules are going to move through the aquaporins to reach equilibrium. Okay, now we're sort of switching gears. Let's take a look. Here we have our picture of our hill again, but we're rolling the ball uphill. Imagine this is a 100 pound ball and you have to roll it up this hill. You're gonna need a lot of energy and you're gonna be pretty tired when you're done. We're gonna be taking a look at cell transport that requires energy. So we're moving against the concentration gradient here. We're going from an area of low to high and we need to use energy. So this needs energy to roll the ball uphill. Let's take a look at another picture. Look at this little girl. She's going up the slide the wrong way. So she went from low to high and she's going to need to use some energy to walk up that slide the wrong way. So when we need to use energy to move molecules across the membrane, we call that active transport. And the memory clue is um, active transport needs energy, and energy is ATP, so energy ATP. I don't know why that's not showing up. So let's take a look at active transport. And active transport moves small or large molecules from an area of low concentration to areas of high concentration. So this is different than passive transport. Passive transport, we went from low concentration or an area of high concentration to low concentration. We went down the slide. Here we're going up the slide. We're going from low to high. And in order to do this, we do need to use proteins and we definitely need to use energy. Let's take a look at a picture of this. Okay, so you'll see our memory clue there, right? ATP, energy of rhymes. Okay, so this is an area where the molecule concentration is low, and down here 
we see that the green molecules here, there's so many down here as compared to here. So this is where it's high. We can see our phospholipid bilayer, that's our cell membrane, and this purple guy here, this is a protein channel. So the molecules are moving from low to high. And in order to do that, it's like going up the slide backwards. You need to use some energy. We need ATP. So take a look. We have ATP and an indication in a picture or drawing that the cell is using energy is this lightning bolt. So if you see this lightning bolt, you know that it's going to be a type of transport that uses energy, active transport.